th there are seven reasons which held me back from cryptos for a long, long time. And I'm going to breeze through these because, um, I mean, I, I have very deep answers for all of them. Um, so I used to, I was by accident a gold and silver bullion dealer uh, years ago, and I am, a, I am still a gold and silver bug. Um, I have the saying, if you can't hold it, you don't own it. And for me, for a long time, I was like, what the hell is a crypto? Like, I can't touch it. It's just weird internet money. And what if I lose the internet or power or electricity, then I'm screwed. But obviously, if you lose that electricity, then you have bigger things to worry about. It was and still is the biggest bubble in human history. That pushed me back for a while. Um, there's lots of counterparty risk. Uh, for a long time, there was only one exchange which you could do any transactions, which was Mt. Gox. And then Mt. Gox got hacked and went bust. Uh, everyone lost everything. And there was me on the sidelines going, ha, told you. Um, so again, more confirmation bias. All of these, these scams so, sort of fed my, my dislike for cryptos. The, the central banks and the elite don't like this market. Now, there is an interesting question of, did they actually create it? Or did someone else create it and now they're going to dominate it? Either way, that's, over, that's a sort of a $200 trillion industry that has been going on for 500 years. And now a little $300 billion industry is starting to poke it and really starting to disintermediate and disrupt a lot of um, the old school. Um, so yeah, there, there, there will be massive regulation coming in. And here's a top investing rule. Never ever invest in something you don't understand or can't explain in 10 seconds. Or, and, and also you need to know your exit plan before you even go into a market. It's the same with a house, a, a, a property, any investment. You need to know your exit plan long before you even expose any penny of your cash. Yeah, Bitcoin wasn't and still isn't scalable for everyday use. Um, the, so for a long time I thought, I mean, Bitcoin on average takes half an hour to transact. So there was me thinking, well, how am I going to buy a Starbucks coffee when Bitcoin takes half an hour? I can't stand by the counter for half an hour for my macchino frappe, whatever. I don't, I don't drink that much coffee, so that probably doesn't exist, that drink. But, um, and yeah, it has a bottleneck in China. So over half of the, uh, the Bitcoin mining power is in the Shenzhen area in China. So for a long time, I thought, well, if China really did want to kill Bitcoin, they could. They could just bomb those factories. Good night. It would freeze up the Bitcoin blockchain for about three months, no buy or sell orders. And then when the rest of the world picks up the slack and the market is open again, what do you think every order will be? Sell. Yeah, it would lose 99% of price. Now, I, I actually gen I genuinely hope that does happen. Um, the reason being, because if it drops 99%, I'm going to be filling my boots. I will buy up all the Bitcoin. <laughs> no. Um, but the thing is, yeah, I'll be racing against the other big boys that will be buying Bitcoin. Um, yeah, so this held me back for a long time. And again, here's confirmation bias. Bitcoin has done this throughout its history. Uh, and every time this happens, people throw their pants out the window and go, ah. Oh. Um, so yeah, this is nothing new. So let's flip to the reasons why I am um, in. So I've got seven figures in cryptos now. Um, and so it takes up nearly all of my time, focus and energy now because one, yeah, I, I want to be the first person to, to know if I am wrong. And it's the unknown unknowns that really do bite you. So I'm, I'm very aware of that. Now, this is the first time a major asset class has been introduced to the world since 1694. And that's not a typo. That was when the UK government released its UK government bond, the, the, the gilt, uh, the gilded edge bond. And what, and the thing is, humans are very cautious, but we're also very curious. And because of our curious nature, we tend to f f uh, flood into new things. We are like magpies. Uh, we like shiny new things. And what economics dictates is that when capital flows into an asset, with all things being equal, prices rise. When capital is extracted from an asset, prices fall. Um, and so, yeah, bonds did very well. And guess what? Cryptos and also the sub. Um, asset of cryptos, I, the ICO world, uh, basically these are two brand new things and the world is like a big magpie and, we, and the amount of capital flooding into this sector is unprecedented in the time, in the very short time it's been around.
And this is a stat that shocked the hell out of me a year ago. I used to think everyone was on the internet. Nope. 3.2 billion people do not have access to the internet. And over the next 10 years, 3.8 billion people are somehow going to get access to the internet. So we're going to get another um, sort of at least another half a billion people coming online. So a lot of people say this is the age of tech, etc. Mm, I think that's half the story. I think this is going to be the age of enlightenment when half of the planet wakes up on an online sense. Now, yes, they are of the developing world and yes, they are poor, but with 3.8 billion people, imagine the talent, the genius, the ideas, the businesses or that w they'll be bringing to the world. And also, um, they won't have a bank account because you need an inside leg measurement, proof of address, utility bills, and all that sort of palaver to open up a bank account. They'll open up a crypto account because you can do that in two minutes with zero identification. So what do you think will happen when 3.8 billion people get access to the internet and also a crypto account? And by the way, the developing world are way more entrepreneurial than the developed world. Uh, my mum is Thai, my dad's English. When I go to um, where my mum is, she is literally from the poorest part of Thailand and her village isn't even on Google Maps. It has no running water or anything. Like, they're, yeah, they're, they're very poor, but every single person in the village is entrepreneurial. They're finding a fish in the river, selling it at markup. It's like, wow, it's, it's ingrained in them. So third reason is that, yeah, the market cap is exploding. And the thing is, the public haven't set foot in this. Yes, this is a very sort of a, a skewed group, but 0.1% of the UK and US population are in cryptos right now. The only oddball out there is North, uh, South Korea where 36% of adult males own cryptos. But, so, I mean, that's a very tech savvy uh, country, but based, long story short, the public in the developed world are not in. Now, here's another thing you need to understand. Bubbles are only popped by the public. Fact. I'm a historian of money, I'm a bit of a money geek, um, and I study bubbles. And all the bubbles are the same. Because in a world of ever-changing variables, there's only one thing that remains constant. Human nature. We never change. Whenever there's money or power, there's going to be greed in there. And so bubbles are only popped by the public, and the public are not in yet. Um, there's too many barriers uh, to entry at the moment, which is actually a good thing. It's an absolute chore to get into cryptos right now, which in itself is a great opportunity because now is when you need to get in before the public come rushing in and then we start selling off as they come running in. Um, just like in 2006 to 2008, every man and his dog was a mortgage advisor and had a portfolio of buy to, buy to let. Back in the year 2000, I was too young, but I've read a lot about it. Everyone was buying tech stocks and pets.com and all, all, all of that. Um, so you, you really do need to avoid what the public are doing. Um, number four is that blockchain, so the underlying technology behind uh, cryptos will change the world. What the internet did to communication, cryptos will do that for money and blockchain tech will do that for trust. We are already experiencing a wave of disintermediation. We have Google, uh, Uber, the world's biggest taxi company, doesn't own a taxi. Uh, Airbnb, the world's biggest hotel, doesn't own any hotels. Spotify, the world's biggest music company. Um, this is happening all over the place. And it's now happening with money. Banks will be disintermediated at some point. Governments will be. Um, the size of a government can shrink by 95% using DLTs, distributed ledger technologies, which is what blockchain is. Um, by the way, Bit of, uh, blockchain is not the future of blockchain. Blockchain is simply a distributed ledger technology and there's lots of different types of blockchain. Uh, blockchain is basically the, the, the first steam engined car. And in the space of basically a couple of years, we've gone from steam engine car to internal combustion engine car to a flipping fighter jet. That's how fast the technology has progressed. Um, so yeah, blockchain, I, I think any, any crypto that's launching out there right now with a standard blockchain should just give up um, and just not bother because you're wasting everyone's time. Um, yeah, I'll come on to that later. And we are nowhere near peak bubble. So I see all of the time, oh, Bitcoin's $20,000. Oh, this is the bubble, this is the bubble. No, it's not. Um, Again, a lot of people say, oh, the bubble's going to pop in 18 months or two years. And at one point, I said myself, 
it's going to pop in 18 months to two years. But that's a that's a bad gauge or yardstick to gauge it because things can be elongated or shortened, etc. A better way to look at uh, gauging peak bubble is looking at the market cap. And the original tech bubble popped at $6.7 trillion, which was 65% of US GDP. In today's money, that's $9.26 trillion. Uh, don't forget, back then, um, information traveled around basically on a daily basis. Now, information's um, lightning. The tech bubble was only played with the US, um, North, North America. The rest of the world couldn't play with the tech bubble. Um, and the currency supply was way lower. Right now, 20 years later, the global currency supply at the minimum is 12 times bigger than what it was 20 years ago. And the crypto market is a global market. So I've, uh, I've got a, um, a pay uh, statistician who, and we just, do, we just crunch numbers all day long. That's all he does and he loves it. Um, and I love paying him to do that, it's, it's amazing. And we've got so many data sets that indicate that $10 trillion dollars is sort of the sort of the beginning of peak bubble. That's when I start getting nervous. So around nine to ten trillion dollars, I'm going to start taking about seventy to eighty percent, eighty uh, percent of my portfolio folio back into cash, back into a real, proper, tangible asset. Remember, even though I'm, I'm very much in cryptos right now, I'm still its biggest critic. The whole crypto market, excuse my language, is one percent real world utility value, ninety nine percent bullshit, future uh, future hopes, dreams, and greed. That's it. It is the scammiest market out there right now. Um, and I've been trading for a long, oh, 13 years now, and all of the scam schemes and MLMs and all that sort of rubbish I saw in the FX market 10 years ago, same bad actors are now looking at cryptos because it's the wild, wild west, and they can get away with it for the moment. But please don't think that regulation is gonna stop that. All regulation does is elevates the sophistication of scams and the level. It goes from blue chip scam, uh, sorry, blue collar scams to white collar. I mean, the stock market is the most regulated market on the planet. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. All that didn't stop Bernie Madoff swindling $65 billion yes. or LIBOR or gold and silver price manipulation, which is still going on right now. And all of the things um, which are happening right now. So yeah, regulate. And don't forget that the reason that regulations are coming is because of taxes. You have to understand that nearly every country other than the OPEC nations Every country's main income stream is tax revenue from its citizens. So they're seeing everyone becoming Bitcoin millionaires and the government, the tax man is going, well, where's our CGT? And so they, they want regulation to get what they feel is owed to the crown or their, their, their respective crown. Um, so that's why we will see regulation. And it's not because they're trying to get rid of, you know, drug money or drug laws or anything. It's no, they, they will use all things like that. But really, it's just so they, they get their money. Um, yeah, so, oh yeah, and the reason I'm pay only pulling out 80% around 10 trillion is because I have a knack of being correct with my calls, but I tend to be in early and out early. That, it's just, it really pisses me off. But <laughs> it's better to be early than late. Um, so it has looked after me. And the reason, yeah, so the 20% I'll leave in ju is just in case cryptos spike to 20, 30, 40 trillion dollars. I don't think it'll go that high in the, over the next couple of years, but I'll leave it there just in case it spikes and I'll be scaling out as it goes up. Number six, cryptos I believe are gonna be one of the best hedges against global economic uncertainty. So when we have a, so <laughs> it's not just me, Jim Rogers, and many other people, Jim Rickards, etc., we're all saying that there's going to be a, a monumental stock and bond market collapse over the next few years. Jim Rogers says it's going to start this year. Um, and uh, Jim Rickards says it's, yeah, in, in fact, Jim Rickards as well uh, says it's going to start this year. Um, I've been saying for a long time that October 2017 was, was the start. And I was correct. It, we, we started seeing a, a sell-off and then we had the Trump bump. Um, and it just, yeah, and since then it's just gone vertical. But even though I may be slightly late, as I said, I'm always, I'm, I'm normally correct, but I'm normally early. And I think, yes, it's, it's gone past October 20, no, not 2017, 2016, October 2016. I'm a bit late, but I still believe it's happening. And um, I've called recently that the, mar the equities are gonna start falling down and they have. Um, and it's been a, a nice trade that. And the thing is when markets crash, people tend to flee to perceived 
safe havens. Now those safe havens tend to be gold and silver, land and property, the US dollar and the Japanese yen. The last two are just ridiculous, seriously. Um, <laughs> Anyone that knows anything about economics knows that the dollar and the yen are just ridiculous currencies at the moment, being um, diluted into oblivion. Um, so what I think will happen is that we will see a, cryptos added to that basket of perceived safe havens because what it, it's, a, an, it's an uncorrelated asset. Now, at the moment, it, it's, it's moving in lockstep, but it is an, an uncorrelated asset. So, um, yeah. And the last reason, so this is actually the biggest reason, and this was originally the reason which kept me away from cryptos, and that is the fact that it is the biggest bubble in human history. When you look at the logarithmic scale of this compared to the, the, the tulip bubble, the tulip bubble of 1636 doesn't come anywhere near the crypto bubble. This is just ridiculous. This is unprecedented how big it is, and we haven't even started. Um, <clears throat> and so, like with investing, I... Um, I, I see myself and what I try and encourage my students is that we need to be like a pig and truffles. So I, I can smell an opportunity through three feet of shit. Um, and sorry, bad language. Um, so and the thing is, you have uh, uh, things like this deter a lot of people, 99 percent of people. But this is actually the biggest freaking opportunity ever because it is the biggest bubble that is scaring away a lot of people this is by default turning this into the biggest greater fools game ever and for those of you who don't know what a greater fools game is it's basically you get in early before the masses come in as the masses come in you exit it's a bit like a pyramid scheme those that start at the beginning normally win and the moment you get someone below you you're sort of you know all those chain letters back in the 90s etc my dad was a victim of one of those chain letters